Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have four stories for you this week. DJI launches a new dock and a new drone, a Connecticut emergency bill to ban Chinese drones. We have your last chance to submit comments for the uh, Department of Commerce and PRM. And then lastly, LIDA calls out a UVSI. Let's get to it. First up this week, DJI launched the new Dock 3 along with the Matrice 4D and the 4TD, which is a thermal version. Now, this is the first DJI Dock that is designed for use on a vehicle, allowing the drone to be launched directly from the mobile platform. The Dock 3 can operate and charge in extreme temperatures up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit and down to negative 22 Fahrenheit. Uh, I know someone in our, our circle who's going to be really happy about this, who was having issues with the Dock 2 in high temperatures. Uh, it's also IP56 rated, and then the Matrice 4D comes with a anti-icing propellers, which I think is one of the first time I've actually seen this. Uh, interesting, at least on, on drones. Uh, speaking of the Matrice 4D, it's IP55 rated, offers 54 minutes of flight time, uh, 45 minutes of hover time. Both the 4T and the 4TD come with a wide angle, a 3X zoom camera, and a 7X zoom camera, and then a laser rangefinder. Uh, the thermal camera also offers near IR light and then a 640 by 512 infrared thermal camera in addition to the other cameras that I just mentioned. And I said camera a lot. Uh, in conjunction with the release, AVSS, the Canadian uh, parachute manufacturer, released the parachute for the Matrice 4D. Uh, it is not yet on the FAA declaration of compliance list as expected, but the press release mentioned that it will be FAA approved along with uh, approval in a lot of other countries. So you'll be able to fly this over people. Now the parachute will be available in Q2 of this year. Uh, DJI just seems to be pumping all of these devices out, I guess, as always. Next up, Connecticut's emergency bill on banning Chinese drones. Uh, the bill has currently passed both the chamber of the state legislature and prohibits state agencies and municipalities from purchasing covered drones, read Chinese drones, uh, starting in October of 2026, and then a ban on operating them in 2028. Now, the legislation also restricts drone flights within 250 feet of a critical electric and other utility infrastructure. Uh, if you're in Connecticut, there's unfortunately not a whole lot you can do at this stage because this, I think, is going to the governor's uh, desk to be signed next. Next up, there are only a few days left to make your voices heard. The Department of Commerce ANPRM comment period is going to end on March 4th. ANPRM advanced notice of proposed rulemaking. We made a whole video, you can watch it right here, on how to send your comment, or at least giving you ideas of how to do it. Uh, don't let the folks in suits uh, who have never flown a drone write the narrative for you on what our UAS actually should do. So make sure that you write your comment. Again, March 4th is the deadline. And speaking of letting your voices heard, the Law Enforcement Drone Association, or LIDA for short, expressed their disheartening at a opinion article that was written by AUVSI president Michael Robbins. John Beale, the president and CEO of LIDA, mentions the op-ed uh, that was written in the drone blog Drone Life, and I quote saying, is an overt gaslighting regarding legislation related to the use of drones from China. Beale explains that LIDA is a platform agnostic organization whose stance has always been to let member agencies and pilots decide what platform works best for them and their communities at large. He also explains in the letter that he has watched with his own eyes a AUVSI representative testify in support of banning Chinese drones for public safety agencies in a bunch of different states. Uh, Beale goes on to question Robin's understanding of how these bans actually affect agencies, forcing many of them to shut down their program completely. Uh, as a result, the agencies no longer have the ability to save lives or to even mitigate risk, including for the public at large. Beale explains that this includes saving elderly citizens and young children who wander into cold weather and then freeze to death. Beale also cites Robin's lack of evidence in his statement that, I quote, security vulnerabilities are well documented with the national security community. In response, Beale instead welcomes the stated clause in section 1709 of the uh, 2024 NDAA, which we mentioned in the past, which mandates a study of DJI and Autel drones for data security. Beale concludes the letter by stating that almost every one of our 3,200 members is angered by the legislation happening in their state and our country, born from greed and in an attempt to limit the ability to save lives. 
Now, as a personal note, I cannot agree more with John's letter. Uh, AUVSI's efforts have not only damaged public safety agencies, but they're also endangering the livelihood of drone service providers and pretty much any drone enthusiast across the country. Uh, the Chinese drone ban that they're pushing for would leave basically anyone that's flying a Mavic, Air, Mini, or any equivalent from uh, any Chinese manufacturer with zero options. And I mean that, zero options. There's nothing available in that range from anyone other than Chinese manufacturers. So if this kind of drone ban would actually affect you, I highly recommend that you politely reach out to AUVSI's leadership to let them know how this will affect your livelihood. They probably won't listen, but you know what? They need to hear it. Join us later for the happy hour in the community, also live Q&A on Monday and in post-flight on Monday in the premium community as well. We'll see you then. Chinese drone, Chinese drones. Beale explains that Lita, Beale explains that, Beale explains that, he explains in the letter, he explains in the letter that, one more time. Beale's explained that, Beale goes on to, Beale goes on to, terrible reading, one more time. In response, Beale instead,